Hashem Naase Venatsliach, Shiru Torah, Bukhim Avaim. Couple small updates. First, I have two piles of uh, papers with me. Two things we'll, uh, Bezot Hashem, uh, discuss tonight. The first one is uh, the first pile of papers, which is, uh, Bo Hashem, several dozen uh, of you that have uh, gone on the uh, website bhtorah.org, our uh, new site for the uh, new campaign. Uh, to get yourselves one box of these uh, amazing CDs and DVD uh, that we discussed just the other day, uh, the Tikkun Abrit uh, lectures and uh, in audio, and also the uh, Hashem Took Back His Millions uh, movie. Uh, one of these boxes, it's about $170 value, we're sending to a bunch of people that have already signed up, and there's still much more left for any of you that have not signed up. If you're located in the United States, please go to bhtorah.org. B as in boy, H as in Harry, uh, Torah, T-O-R-A-H, dot org, and uh, sign up and we'll send you a uh, brand new box of these uh, CDs, 25 double CDs. You'll be able to uh, distribute in your community. The only thing that we ask you to do is to distribute them right away. Uh, and not uh, to delay, not to keep them in your purse, not to uh, keep them in uh, just in case. Give them out as soon as possible. That's in essence the whole point. So a, uh, for the first pile of papers, for the first bunch of people that have signed up, about three or four dozen of you uh, that have actually already signed up, Chazakim uh, Ubuchim, Ashrechem Ve'ashrechelkechem. Chazakim Ubuchim, that you're taking the initiative to, uh, to help Am Yisrael by uh, distributing these CDs. All, you know, although it may seem like not a big deal, it's free, why not, uh, why not take stuff for free? Uh, the reality is that the Satan will always fight Kiruv because that's how we steal his soldiers. Uh, so when people go out there and they, uh, they make the sacrifice, they know that they're going to uh, you know, have to uh, fight the Yetzirah, not just to uh, place the order, uh, but also to... Uh, uh, to go and uh, give it to people in their hands, give it in the community, and so on. Uh, they know that they're gonna they're taking on a war, but at the same token, they're taking on uh, the wars of Hashem, uh, just like uh, Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aaron Cohen uh, in this week's parasha. Kadosh Baruch Hu says that Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aaron Cohen eshivet chamati me'al bnei Yisrael b'ken oed kinati betocham velo chiliti et bnei Yisrael b'kinati. Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu in this week's parashat Pinchas, Hashem said to Moshe, Pinchas, son of Elazar, son of Aaron the Kohen, turn my wrath, turn back my wrath from upon the children of Israel, where he zealously avenged my vengeance among them, so I did not consume the children of Israel in my vengeance. Here, Rabotai Karim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Bechvodo Ube'atzmo, tells us that if it was not for Pinchas and his zealousness to fight the wars of Hashem, the war for the honor of Hashem, Hashem would have destroyed all of Am Yisrael, Chas v'shalom. And it's not because we were already located in uh, Eretz Yisrael, like some idiots are telling people today, oh no, only if you sin inside Eretz Yisrael is, uh, is Hashem actually kill people and punish them. That's what nonsense this, they're not in Eretz Yisrael, they're in a desert. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu saw that Am Yisrael is sinning, they're, they're uh, being uh, intimate with, uh, with non-Jewish women, they're uh, serving idols, they're doing all types of things that are against the Torah, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu just started killing people. 24,000 people died in, in a matter of minutes just during the, that, this week's parasha. Last week there was also several thousand, and, and obviously everybody that's been reading the weekly Torah portion and just simply knows how to read, sees that HaKadosh Baruch Hu does reward and punish. But at the same token, we also see that Pinchas, for his zealousness, for his zealousness, he is the one that brought Shalom. He is the one that brought Shalom because to tell people that they're doing something wrong is how you bring Shalom, how you bring peace. Because otherwise, if their version of what Hashem's will is, is not the same as what Hashem's will is, they think that uh, to fulfill Hashem's will means they could do whatever they want. They could have gay parades. They could uh, promote uh, all types of heretical thoughts. They could do. Uh, they could steal. They could act uh, morally righteous only according to their own opinions, just like uh, 
the Hitler Imach Shimo and Himmler and uh, Eichmann and all of the Nazis from the World War II, they all thought that they're morally correct, just like all heretics think that they're morally correct. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, if your morals are based on your own opinion or your gangster friends or the losers that you surround yourself with, you are not in line with HaKadosh Baruch Hu and I will at some point punish you. I will at some point punish you. And that's why when someone warns people, warns people about this, that's what bringing shalom means. That's what achdut is. Unity is not by accepting everybody as they are. That's not unity. That is uh, chaos. That is heretical. That is complete foolishness. Accepting people for who and what they are without telling them that they're doing something wrong that's for their benefit, that is being a murderer. Because if you know that someone is going against Hashem and they perhaps either don't know or they don't know the ramifications of it and you're the one that's telling them something, that's going to bring peace. It's going to bring peace between them and Hashem. That's going to be bring peace into the world itself. But of course, this is the dirty work that a lot of people not only don't want to do, but also go against. Why? Because the Satan, Satan has a lot of soldiers and he convinces people that if they simply just like everyone and act like everyone and so on, that's the way to, to create unity. So the question is, what do the Gdole Adom uh, think? What do the biggest rabbis in the world think? I mean, they're not necessarily all doing lectures on the, uh, uh, I mean, on the internet, and, and even more so, you see that sometimes you have people that are making, a, you know, have videos on the internet, are saying things that are contrary to, uh, to what we're saying in our lectures for the last several years, Baruch Hashem, thousands of lectures. So you have yourself a box full of lectures that we're giving out for free. You have several lectures, Baruch Hashem, every single week that we're doing live and, uh, and all types of video clips and so on. Who is behind this? Who is, does anybody support it? Because of course, if you talk to the naysayers, they're going to say that our opinion is a independent opinion. None of the big rabbis think like us. None of the big rabbis talk to us. Everybody hates us. We're frowned upon and so on and so forth. But can somebody prove this in black and white? Can someone prove this in black and white? Because they can say something and it could be true and they could say something could not be true. We already proved that the naysayers are not only heretical, but they're also liars. But the question is, who is supporting? Now we have Baruch Hashem on our website and our YouTube channels, many videos, videos from big rabbis that have supported us uh you know publicly and this is not a common thing for anyone that will look up the websites of some of these uh, uh other rabbis some uh, great rabbis and obviously some of the Leavdil heretics that we talk we speak against on a regular basis you're not going to usually see the support videos or letters by anybody simply because that's not a common thing sometimes you'll see somebody writing a letter for uh what's called an askama for a book and things like that but rarely are there videos done uh for uh one rabbi for another simply because people don't want to put their reputation on the line unless they can vouch for their work so in my hand in my hand right now i have the second pile of papers and this is not the complete pile this is just something that's fresh fresh off the press fresh off the press and i love to uh make sure that everyone always sees things for what they are not because i think that the naysayers will ever change because of course they'll always have some other lie to make up or some other type of excuse and 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 so on but the reality is is that we want all of the people that are supporting all of the people that are learning with us to at the very least always have the confidence that this is da torah this is not dat yaron this is not the opinion of yaron uven this is not the opinion of uh, Rav Ephraim. This is not the opinion of a unique cult. But this is the dot of the Torah. Everything that we teach. Now, Baruch Hashem, anyone that knows anything about Chachamim, Chachamim don't just write letters for no reason. Chachamim don't just make videos for no reason. Unless they verify and they check every little thing, they simply don't put their names on it. That we, you know, sometimes there have been some Chachamim that will encounter will mean will see listen why don't you come look at our work and then see if you could uh uh support what we do and so on and some people would say listen i simply don't have the time i don't have the time to check everything that you do and therefore i simply uh can't just vouch for something blindly because of all of the uh mistakes that are out there in the world today and that's perfectly fine 
So which means that if you're going to talk to a, uh, a, a somebody and you're going to ask for support, they have to obviously double check what they're doing. This is something that uh, every Baal uh, Dea, uh, 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 any person with a little bit of brain, knows or at the very least learned in the last year with all of these uh, conspiracy videos that you see about coronavirus and the vaccine and so on. What is the first common denominator that all of the videos and articles have in common? What is the common denominator? The first thing is they start with the credentials of who is talking. The credentials. This is Dr. Such and such. He has done such and such. He has been around for X amount of time. He knows everything. He did this. He did that. Da, 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 da. And they give you the credentials for the first 15 minutes of a 20 minute video. That's generally how it is in the world. People want to know, you know, who supports you, who backs you. I remember when I was on Wall Street, one of the things that the clients enjoyed is the fact that I had nine different security licenses, which is very uncommon. Most people have one, two, maybe three licenses. I had nine different securities licenses, each requiring a very lengthy th test and so on. But the point is, I was certified across the industry in bonds and options and stocks and so on and so forth. And also had a lot of other rewards that we got in the industry and people that knew that they're dealing with somebody that at the very least is trying to be the best. It's trying to be the best, not just somebody that's just paying uh, $100 to get some type of certificate in the mail. So in the rabbinical world, it's much more difficult. And the reason why is because it's not about just what test you passed, but it's about show us your stuff. What are you saying? What are you writing? And Baruch Hashem, we've done a lot of work that people can watch on the internet and so on. And uh, we also, Baruch Hashem, are now in the process of publishing my first book, and it's going to be in Hebrew. Uh, we did it in Hebrew for a couple of major reasons. Number one, because the overwhelming majority of my work over the last seven years has been in English, and it's time for us to uh, help the Hebrew-speaking market uh, you know, as much as what we're doing in the English speaking market. So the book is in Hebrew. Uh, Hashem eventually we'll, we'll translate it to English too. That shouldn't be too difficult. But the second thing is, is because we wanted the Gdolei Ado, one of the big rabbis, we wanted the big Chachamim to read it themselves and simply decide, is this da Torah? Is this da Torah? Because you, you know, because if you say, listen, I have a uh, letter from uh, such and such rabbi on my English book. All of the naysayers will say, yeah, but this rabbi doesn't really know what you're saying because it's English and he doesn't speak English. Like everybody assumes that the, the wisest men on the planet are stupid. It's, it's really silly. But nonetheless, here we have a bunch of different letters from some of the greatest rabbis that I know, some of the greatest rabbis in the world. Now we have one letter that uh, several support letters that we've gotten already over the years from Arab Gidon ben Moshe. Arab Gidon ben Moshe, for anyone who doesn't know, is one of the head rabbis in Jerusalem. Okay, he's in the uh, Bed Din of Jerusalem. A Jerusalem Bed Din is also one of the main Talmidim of uh, Arab uh, Tzion Abba Shaul, Al Abba Shalom. Uh, Arab Tzion Abba Shaul had uh, three or four main Talmidim. And, uh, and, uh, Arab Gidon ben Moshe is not only one of them, one of those main ones, but uh, even more so, he's actually one of those that actually wrote the books, co-wrote the books, uh, the book of Arab Tzion Abashaul. So he has written a public support letter for our organization, for the work that we do, for the Torah that we teach, and, our, and Baruch Hashem also for the book. He's uh, made a video for us. For anyone that wants to go to our website or the YouTube page, you just type in uh, Rabbi Gidon ben Moshe, and you'll see Rav Gidon make a video uh, publicly supporting us, but also, again, continuous support. Not just support in the past, but support right now. We just got a recent letter of Hashem from him supporting what we're doing. We also have one of the, uh, one of the serious Talmidei Chachamim, one of the serious Talmidei Chachamim, Ibn Ibrak, uh, Rav uh, Yosef Abadi, the, uh, from the Rosh, Rosh Kolel of, of um, Oil Yosef, uh, also, a uh, Dayan, Talmud Chacham, wrote and made a video for us, wrote a book, also uh, supporting the, the new book, Baruch Hashem, and this is another one. We have a uh, Arab Yosef Chaim Mizrahi, which is a Dayan in Eretz Yisrael, who's made several videos to support us, continues to support all of our work, also uh, gave us an askama for the book. Our own very, very dear Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi from, uh, from New York, 
wrote us a uh, uh, a skama, a very beautiful one, heartwarming one. That uh, Baruch Hashem, he continues to support everything that we do, and uh, we Baruch Hashem do uh, reciprocate the same, of course. Uh, Rav Chaim Kachlon. This is one of the Talmidei Chachamim in Netanya. Uh, it's uh, Rav uh, Ephraim's uh, father. He's also a uh, uh, in a um, a Megid Shiur in uh, Yeshiva in in, uh, in uh, Maori Israel. It's a Yeshiva in uh, in um, in Netanya. He's also built the Yeshiva. A uh, very serious Talmid Chacham. He actually wrote a not just an Askama, but uh, also a uh, literally an entire. Uh, synopsis of the book uh with each and every single section and who it's relevant to and so on really really beautiful stuff our own very dear friend this is one of the tzaddikim one of the uh biggest tzaddikim that i uh personally know of shlomo bar kochba of shlomo bar kochba is uh not a uh known uh on youtube or uh, or, or in that case but uh, anyone that is in uh eretz israel yerushalayim in arnof uh, knows the uh, who Rav uh, Bar Kochba is. He is uh, not only a Baal Chesed and a big Talmud Chacham. He wrote a, uh, a couple of books. Baruch Hashem also brought uh, the, uh, the the Rabbi of the Chida, Rav Mizrahi, the Rabbi of the Chida, a few hundred years ago. Rav Bar Kochba uh, rewrote, took the handwriting of the past and uh, rewrote his book. Baruch Hashem. So he's a very serious scholar. And uh, of course, we also have our uh, very, very, you know, very dear to us, uh, Rav Eliyahu Ben Chaim just sent us a letter today, Baruch Hashem. Rav Eliyahu Ben Chaim, one of the top Dayanim in America uh, and in the world, just sent us a letter today uh, of support. He's made videos for us in the past and uh, that, that's uh, showing support, but also, again, continue the support uh, by sending us another very lovely letter where just Baruch Hashem, all the... Uh, uh, you know, just uh, stuff that's amazing to hear, amazing to read, uh, even if it's about yourself, to, to see Chachamim, see and review your work, and then support it, is, there's nothing better than that. Now, uh, the last couple is a, uh, they, they're the best of the, of the best in, in anybody's perspective, simply because, uh, not that Chatz Shalom, uh, the, uh, the rabbis are in levels, but in a sense of uh, the, the support, you know, you're always going to have people uh, say, oh, listen, yeah, this guy is your friend. That one is somebody that no one knows. That one is this. That one is that. So when you uh, when you get credentials, you also want to have make sure that you have support and you have backings from people that everybody agrees. Now, the uh, top Dayan in the world. Now, there's many Dayanim in the world. In America, I was surprised to recently find out that in America, there's only about 100 or so Dayanim. For the entire American Jewry, which is a, really a disaster, uh, but nonetheless, there is a uh, uh, there's a bigger need for them. But nonetheless, in Eretz Yisrael, there's more than that. But more importantly, there's one Dayan that's the top Dayan in the world, and that Dayan is Rav Yaakov Zamil. Rav Yaakov Zamil is the top Rabbi in the supreme rabbinical court in Jerusalem. In in, in Israel, is the top of the top. In so many words. There is the, the, the head rabbi of the country, which is Rabbi Tzach Yosef. That's for the uh, Sephardi Jewry. And then you have a Rav uh, 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 Lau for Ashkenazim. But generally speaking, everybody looks at them as, 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 as equals. Everybody will say, this is the head rabbi. That's the head rabbi. But then there's the head Dayan. The head Dayan is, in essence, number two. Because there isn't a one or two between the other two. There's, them, there's them, and then there's the number two. Number two, some will even say, same level. Top Dayan in the world is Rav Yaakov Zamir. And Rav Yaakov Zamir, for anyone who uh, uh, saw the blessing video that we, we publicized recently, he is in it. But he's not only in it, he has made a video of his own and a letter of his own. And his letter details every little bit of work, Baruch Hashem, that he reviewed, that we do, and supports it, the book, the chesed, the lectures, the musar, the irat shamayim, and so on and so forth. One of the best letters I've, I've ever read about uh, the things that we do. And this is, again, from the top Dayan in the world. Like, your local rabbi, whoever he may be, is not bigger than the top Dayan in the world. With all due respect to your rabbi, maybe a scholar, maybe a chacham, and so on. Simple. If someone is going to review facts, is a review, who, to, who, where, where is the uh, more value? They're not going to review your local rabbi from whatever kila you're in versus the top Dayan in the world. And Baruch Hashem... Top Dayan in the world reviewed everything we do, listed it in the letter, and Baruch Hashem publicly supports it 
and there's a there's going to be a video that we'll publish also but this is wonderful heartwarming message from one of the top rabbis in the world one of the top geonim in the world someone that studies chavruta with Arab Yitzchak Yosef Shichye. and of course everyone that uh, watches my shurim on a regular basis also saw that the head rabbi Arab Yitzchak Yosef himself not only supports but made a video for us made a lecture for us and public support of all of our work Bo Hashem uh we're actually in the process of finishing the uh translation English subtitles to that uh lecture and uh, we'll publicize it but Arab Yitzchak Yosef Bo Hashem publicly supported all of the work that we do uh both English Hebrew and, and so on אני מברך, אני מברך את הרבנים, רגע, 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 אני מברך את הרבנים, הרב ירון ראובן, הרב אפרים כחלון, ראשי ארגון בעזרת השם, שהלכו בפיוניון, שעלו מעלה מעלה, יהיה להם ברכה והצלחה, קדוש ברוך הוא ימלא משאלות ליבם, לטובה ולברכה, שבכל אשר יפנו, ישכילו ויצליחו, יזכו עוד לעשות כאלה וכאלה, הודיעו תורה לאדירה, אמן ואמן. הוא היהודי הזה, הוא היה מיליונר, סגר את כל הביזנס, אמר אני משקיע פה בעולמה של תורה. איפה הוא גר? בפלורידה. פלורידה, איפה זה פלורידה? באמריקה. כן, ליד. אנחנו שם עכשיו הולכים להקים קהילה ספרדית. קהילה ספרדית גדולה. כן, קהילה ספרדית גדולה. Hashem, we have a few that are also uh, in the works the key is is that when you have one side you have two two sides okay you have one side and you have the other side one side has the support of the biggest rabbis in the world the other side has the support of non-jews heretics and uh well that's it where are you gonna go where are you gonna go Surprisingly, Rabotai, some people will still go to the heretical side. Why? Because the uh, Gemara says, Reshaim, even at the gate of Gehenom, will not do tshuva. But the point is, is that, why? Why would anybody support all the work that we do? Why would anybody, you know, write an askama for the book, support the work that we do, with all of the th- wars that we fight, whether it's fighting against different heretical rabbis, or uh, talking about the judgment, Gehenom, and so on and so forth. Why would anybody support all of this zealousness? Well, first and foremost, you see it in the Torah. You see in the Torah, there's a uh, uh, no uh, no word that's more common in the Torah, and as far as the, the way to serve Hashem, than Yirat Shemaim, fear of the Almighty. If you compare how many times it mentions fear of the Almighty, Yirat Shemaim, versus Avat Hashem, it's a factor of more than uh, probably 300 to 1. Meaning for every 300 times, for every one time it says about loving Hashem, you'll probably find somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 times it says to fear Hashem. So you have yourself a pretty significant difference between the two. And that's basically the Torah. But of course, the naysayers, the modernizers, the reformers will tell you, yeah, but this is not mainstream. It doesn't get more mainstream than the biggest rabbis in the world. If you're not in line with the Da Torah of the biggest rabbis in the world, the head, the top Dayan in the world, the top rabbi in the world, the top Talmidei Chachaminim in the world, what stream are you on? Maybe a different religion perhaps, maybe a different thought, but it's not the stream of Judaism. And that's one of the things that a person needs to understand. So the question is, what is the stream of Judaism? Why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu allow Pinchas to not only kill Zimri, not only go fight it, but actually not even get punished for it, and in fact get rewarded for it. Because when the Shimon tribe saw their leader, their top guy, their rabbi, Zimri, get murdered, they wanted to kill Pinchas. And when they were told they can't do it, they started saying all types of things. Yeah, nah, he's, uh, he's not even a... You know, he's not even a real Jew. He, his father, 
is a uh, uh, his grandfather was a idol worshiper. His great great grandfather is Yosef Atzadik, and really, you know, Yosef maybe he did this, maybe he did that. They started saying all types of stupid things in order to justify their heretical thoughts. But yet, Hakadosh Baruch Hu says, "You Reshaim need to listen." Whether you're the Reshaim of the time of Pinchas or you're the Reshaim of today, the only reason why you're alive in this world is because of Pinchas. Is because of those people that have been fighting for the Torah for generation after generation, despite how many heretics will fight against them and how many times they tried to hurt them. Why? Those are the people that HaKadosh Baruch Hu aligns himself with. Not the Rishayim and not the, uh, the uh, innovators, if you will. Now, the question is, why would a Kadosh Baruch Hu do this? Where does he say that this is going to, what he's going to do? Let's see, Rabbi Let's see. First and foremost, one of the most important topics that we have discussed more often than anything else is the topic of Yirat Shemaim, the fear of the Almighty. Where is the whole concept of Yirat Shemayim? Where does it even get the name Yirat Shemayim, fear of the Almighty? Where do we get? It means fear of the Almighty, but it literally translates Yirat Shemayim, fear of heaven. Fear of heaven. Where does it come? The Gemara in Masechet Chagiga says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was alone. And then he minimized himself in order to make room for the universe that he wanted to create. And he started with a single dot and he expanded it. Very similar to the uh, Big Bang. But of course, the Big Bang continues to do all types of other things that are against the Torah. But nonetheless, the Gemara in Masechet Chagiga talks about how Hashem started the world with a point and then eventually it expanded and expanded. And then Akadosh Baruch Hu roared at the universe and it stopped. It stopped expanding, which is contrary to what science says. As the universe continues to expand. Now, initially, when Akadosh Baruch Hu created the world, Rabotai, the heavens were, the, he created the uh, s- certain things. He created water, he created fire. Before he created the earth, before he created everything, he created these specific things. Because the, uh, the, the sky, for example, is a combination of fire and water. So even though it says that Hashem created uh, the heavens and then he created the uh, water and so on, he actually, these things, uh, were created beforehand. It's just that during the, uh, he initially created everything in an instant and then divvied up the positioning of these things uh, over the next uh, six days. But initially, the uh, the heavens was like a liquidy, was uh, something that was not solid. And Hashem roared at it and it froze. Hence the reason why the outer surface of the universe is all one uh, big uh, block of ice. That is the heavens, if you will. That's the upper heavens. And that, why did it freeze? Because it was afraid of Hashem. And from there we get Yirat Shamaim. The Shamaim were afraid. The heavens were afraid of Hashem. That's what Yirat Shamaim means. That's where it originally starts. So when a person has Yirat Shemaim, in essence, is it is coming originally from there, from that original fear, that first fear that was expressed in the, uh, in, in the universe. Now, the question is, can you be a good Jew without Yirat Shemaim? Can you be a good Jew without thinking that Hashem rewards and punishes in this world as well as the next world? Can you be a good Jew while making fun of the whole concept of Gehenna? Can you be a good Jew if you don't believe in Gehenna or you think that Gehenna, uh, the the punishment is a uh, something that is not eternal. It's just a uh, um, uh, something temporary for maybe a few months. And it's really just a bunch of people making fun of you and embarrassing you. It's not really fire and brimstone and, and so on. Can you? Let's see. Let's see. Now, the Zohar Kadosh in Tikkun Zohar, in Tikkun number 30, Tikkun number 30, says 
רבי שמעון בר יוחאי says to his son אלעזר יש מי שירא מהקדוש ברוך הוא כדי שיחיו את בניו ויגדל עשרו בעולם הזה. says there is such a person that has fear of the Almighty, has ירד שמיים only because he doesn't want Hashem to kill him or his kids and also he doesn't want to lose his money. ואם חסר מזה, אינו ירא ממנו, אבל אם he loses these things or these things are not really on the line he doesn't have fear of the old, fear of Hashem. זה לא שם לו את יראת Hashem לעיקר. This is such a person that does not make fear of the Almighty as the uh, foundation. אבל מי שירא את הקדוש ברוך הוא בין בטוב בין בצרה but if there's someone that fears Hashem whether in good or bad זהו מי ששם את יראת אדוני בו לעיקר. This is a person that makes the fear of the Almighty as the uh, most important, fun, most fundamental. ששלוש דרגות אין של יראה. There's three stages, there's three stages for the fear of the Almighty. יש יראה בין בטוב בין בצרה. ויש יראה שיראה את הקדוש ברוך הוא בטוב ולא בצרה. ויש יראה שלא שם אותה עליו לעיקר. says there is a fear where he is afraid whether in good or bad there's a fear where he is afraid uh, of, of the good but not necessarily in a time of trouble and then there's a fear that he doesn't care whether it's good or bad he doesn't care whether it's good or bad a tzaddik amul samota alav leikar ben betov ben ladin Someone that's a completely righteous is fear, has fear of the Almighty, whether it's through good times or judgment. A benoni samuta alav letov velo ledin. Someone that is in the middle has a fear of the Almighty when uh, things are uh, good, not uh, when there is uh, judgment. A rasha gamur lo samuta ikar lo betov velo bedin. Rasha doesn't put. fear of the Almighty, not in good or bad. Meaning what? Meaning what? What does it mean? He doesn't put it good or bad. How, how could he do this? So, this is Tikkun number 33 in the uh, Tikkun Azor. In uh, Daf Ein Vav, Amud Bet. So then you go to Tikkun number 30. Tikkun number 30 says... It itava itava says that uh, there is a fear and there's a fear. There's a love and there's a love. Shere Adam me Akadosh Baruch Hu, Kedeh Shelo Yared Mine Chasav, Kedeh Shelo Yamut Banav Bechayav, there's a person that has the fear of the Almighty because he's afraid that he'll lose his money or his, his, his children won't die during his life. נמצא שאם היה יורד מנכסיו, או אם ימותו בניו בחייו, הוא לא היה ירא ממנו. That if it wasn't for the, the sake that there's a risk that he'll lose his money or lose his children, he wouldn't even be afraid of Hashem. And if that wasn't on the line, he would in essence pretend like he, he loves him. הירא והאהבה הללו לא שם את יראת אדוני ואת האהבה שלו לעיקר. This such a person does not make his uh, fear of the Almighty. As the, uh, as the most fundamental part of his connection to Hashem. אבל אהבה ויראה היא העיקר שלו בין טוב ובין רע. ומשום זה נקראות היראה והאהבה הללו על מנת לקבל פרס. And these types of people that have this type of uh, connection to Hashem that it's based on Uh, it's only based on uh, him afraid to lose money, him afraid to lose health, uh, him, uh, uh, there's something there. Uh, this, it says, These types of fears are, are considered as if they're uh, the type of connection to Hashem that are dependent on something in order to get something. שיראה ואהבה על מנת לקבל פרס היא יראה של שפחה. The, uh, the fear of the Almighty only based on whether you're going to get something, whether you're, uh, is, is like uh, the uh, love that you have uh, for a uh, maid servant.
Meaning, he's, it's, not a, it's not a good connection. It's not a good connection. Okay, let's end up. So here we see that there's different levels of fear of the Almighty and so on. Okay. Now, the Zohar, Kadosh, the mystical works, like the naysayers like to say, is that the only place that talks about it? Let's see. Gemara, Masechet Brachot, page 6b. V'amar Rabbi Chelbo Amar Rav Una. Rabbi Chelbo said the name of Rav Una. Kol Adam, sheesh bo yirat shamayim dvaram nishmayim. Anyone who fears heaven, his words are heard. Shenemar, he's bringing a pasuk. He's bringing a pasuk from Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13. Sof davar ko nishmay et ha'ele imira. For it is stated, the sum of matter. When all has been heard, fear God. Shlomo HaMelech says that uh, at the end, someone that wants to get himself, uh, every, everyone's uh, report is going to be publicized, everything is going to be heard, all the skeletons that are in your closet will be shown, and so on. That's, in essence, the pshat meaning of that verse. But to say to the saying, yeah, but this also, we learn from there, it says, Akol nishma. What's a kol nishma? Everything is heard. What's everything is heard? Everything is heard based on how much fear of heaven you had. So anyone that has fear of heaven, his words will be heard. Which means that all of the people that do not have fear of heaven, have not, don't have fear of Hashem, they cannot affect people. They cannot affect people in a positive way. They cannot you know, help people change their lives. They can perhaps entertain them. They can make them laugh maybe. They can make them bigger heretics than they already are. They could uh, make them into bigger Rashaim than they are. They could confuse them. They could do a lot of things. But to make them serve Hashem better, never happening. Why? Because if you don't have Yerat Shemayim as a teacher, your words are not going to be heard. Your words are not going to be heard. And then the Gemara continues, same page, 6b in Masechet Brachot. What's meant, what's meant by this, say, uh, this is all of men? This pasuk, kizeh kol adam. What does it mean? This is this is all of a person, because that's the continuation of that verse. What's the? What does it mean? This is all of man. So Amar Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Lazar said, the Holy One blessed is He said, kol haolam kulo nivra ela bishvil ze that the entire world was only created for this person. Meaning, this person who fears God and keeps his commandments, the whole world, is for his sake. So a person that fears Hashem, the entire world continues to exist for his sake. When a person is teaching people to do fear Hashem, when a person is expressing fear of Hashem, when a person is learning fear of Hashem, the world exists for them. Rabbi Abba Bar Ka'ana Amal, the Rabbi Abba Bar Ka'ana says, Shekul, Zekeneged, Kol Aulam Kulo. This person who fears God and keeps his commandments is equal in importance to the entire world. Rabbi Shimon ben Azai says, and some say it was also Rabbi Shimon ben Zoma said it, that Kol Aulam Kulo, Lo Nivra, Ela Litzvot Ze, that the uh, phrase is referring to that the entire world was created only to serve as an accompaniment for this person. So here we see, fear of the Almighty is not exactly something that the sages are, don't talk about. What else do they say? Page 16 in Masechet Brachot, 16b. We have some more. How did the sages pray? How did the sages pray? Rav Rav is uh, one of the great sages in the Gemara, and even though he was an Amora, many of the other uh, Chachamim say, no, nah, he was the equivalent of a Tana, which was like the uh, unbelievable statement. So, Rav, after his Shmonais prayer, after his Amida prayer, he would have a private prayer. What was his private prayer? May it be your will, Hashem, our God, that you give us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of sustenance, a life of physical health, a life in which there is fear of sin, a life in which there is no shame or humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, 
A life in which we have the love of Torah and the fear of heaven. A life in which you will fulfill for us all of our heart's desires for good. So after his Amidah, you would have this special prayer. Interestingly, the Chachamim say, look at that. He says, first off, that he wants to have fear of sin. But then he says again, fear of heaven. Isn't it the same thing? No. There are different levels of fear of the Almighty, different levels of expressing your fear of the Almighty. And when a person is afraid of the sin itself, sometimes it's only because he's afraid that Hashem will punish him. He's afraid that Hashem is going to take his money away, he's going to take his life away, and so on and so forth. So he says, please Hashem, give me the fear of sin. But also, fear of heaven. What fear of heaven? Also because of your, the awe of your majesty. Higher level of, of Yerat Shemaim. Higher level of Yerat Shemaim, similar to how a husband and a wife that respect each other and want to stay married forever, have to respect each other, have to honor each other, have to be patient with each other, especially when the woman is pregnant and there's a lot of hormones or if there's medical issues in the family or there's financial issues, people that want to stay married and want a solid relationship, they have to have respect, especially during those times. Because if there's no respect during those times, there's no real relationship. And the, uh, the key is that even sometimes when the other person will make you upset, because they're doing something ridiculous or they're saying something ridiculous, whatever, you still have to always make sure you never cross that line. You always respect each other more than anything else. It's, respect is even more important than love, believe it or not, because respect is something that if you lose it, it's very, very hard to gain. Very, very hard to gain. And uh, love is not necessarily, not necessarily so hard to lose. Respect is very hard to lose, very easy to lose. And the point is, is that when a person respects the other person, even if the other person makes their angry, makes them angry, they're not going to go and they uh, hit them or, or embarrass them or, or say something that is a uh, spiteful. Why? Because they have respect for that person. Same concept, if you will, when it comes to the awe of the Almighty, is that it's not a it's not a awe because you're afraid he's going to kill you or he's going to put you in Gehenna, but rather because you have this respect for, the, for, his, for his kinghood. And again, each one of these types of fears has levels of their own, but nonetheless, each one is even a deeper connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself. But here we see that the Chachamim are learning from, learning from their, uh, their uh, Rav, saying, Rav, not only do we uh, want to learn from you, we want to learn from your prayer, how you pray. And you pray about fear of the Almighty every day, different types of it. Okay. The Gemara continues in Masechet Brachot, page 33b. In 33b, as different sages, Amar Rabbi Chanina, Rabbi Chanina said, Akol bidei shamayim chutz mirat shamayim. Everything is in the hands of heaven, except the fear of heaven. Meaning, Everything that happens in your life or in the world is in the hands of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. To such an extent that the Chachamim say that if a leaf, a leaf wants to fall off of the tree, it has to ask for permission from Hashem. Needless to say, if a building is going to collapse in a, a, a world like we live in here in America, not a third world country, Obviously, this has to be signed off by Hashem. Not anybody else, not a construction company, not a, uh, a, a, a wind. Everything gets permission from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and in fact, the stamp from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The fact that you're tall, short, ugly, pretty, big eyes, small eyes, half teeth, no teeth, have money, don't have money, married, single, have children, don't have children, all, everything is decided by Hashem. The only thing that's not decided by Hashem is whether you will have fear of heaven. That is something you have to earn. You have to work at it. And in fact, the Oli Israel, uh, Rabbi Israel Misalan says, all other fears in the world, fear of bugs, fear of flying, fear of heights, claustrophobia and arachnophobia and all types of phobias and all types of fears, all of those fears come to a person naturally. They're afraid of poverty, loneliness, uh, you know, all types of fears. The only fear that does not come to a person naturally is the fear of heaven. 
that is something they have to earn they have to work at why if the fear of heaven would have come to you in a natural way there would be no purpose for you to live in this world because you would be a perfect tzaddik a perfect tzaddika so this is the only fear out of all fears that does not come naturally and in fact you have to work at how do you work at it by learning about it and here Rabbi Hanina says that everything in the world is in the hands of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, except whether you're gonna have fear of him why because that you have that is your purpose in the world that is your purpose in the world where is he basing it on he bases it on the Torah where on the Torah Moshe Rabbeinu says to Am Yisrael in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12 Moshe Rabbeinu says, And now Israel, what does Hashem your God ask of you but merely to fear Hashem your God? From there the Chachamim paskin that the fear of the Almighty is a mitzvah from the Torah. It's a Torah obligation, not a suggestion. What are you going to be afraid of if it's not what HaKadosh Baruch Hu can do to you, to your community, to your people, to your family, to, to, to everything in this world and the next. What else are you going to be afraid of? What are you going to be afraid of? He doesn't like you. That's the silliness of people when they hate the whole concept of fearing Hashem so much that they'll create any type of uh, ideology regardless of whether it makes sense or not. Why? Because people are easy to confuse. But here, if you actually learn the Torah, you see, Moshe Rabbeinu says, listen, if you have to sum up the whole Torah in a single mitzvah, what is Hashem really asking you to do? That's what he says to them. What does Hashem ask you to do? Fear him. That's it. Wait a minute. But he also asked me to put on tefillin, and he asked me to keep Shabbat, and he asked me to eat kosher, and he asked me to wait for half the month uh, until I'm with my wife, and he asked me to uh, have uh, children, or at least try, because that's the effort. And he asked me not to waste seed. And he asked me to watch my eyes. And he asked me to uh, to uh, bathe and not desecrate his name. And he asked me to do this. And he asked me to do that. What do you mean he's only saying fear of him? Moshe Rabbeinu says to us, all of those mitzvot, both the biblical mitzvot and the rabbinical mitzvot, they all get summed up into a one mitzvah what's that mitzvah do you fear god or not if you fear god all of the mitzvot become easy all of the mitzvot become easy even when they're hard not that they're easy to do to watch your eyes may not be easy to eat kosher may not be easy for some people to to keep shabbat may not even be easy for some people but it's easy to justify the necessity that I have to do it because I fear God if I don't fear God everything becomes a burden everything becomes difficult and in fact eventually becomes unbearable therefore Moshe Rabbeinu says to Am Yisrael what is Hashem asking of you he asks you to fear him and then the Gemara continues is fear of heaven then a small matter as the verse implies that uh, why it's just one small thing one little thing why does Rabbi Hanina say it in the name of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai that the Holy One blessed CC has nothing in his treasure house other than a store of the merit of fear of heaven as the verse states in a, uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6 that the fear of Hashem that's his treasure if the fear of heaven is the only achievement that Hashem values sufficiently to store it, then obviously it's a great matter. Meaning, Hamim say, don't make it seem as if all of the Torah is just one mitzvah, where it's a small thing. It's a great thing. Even though it's summed up in one mitzvah, it's a great thing. Why? Because Hashem has one thing in his treasure chest. What is it? The merit of all of those that express fear of him. That's what's in his treasure chest. He could have said he has refrigerators there. He has uh, the, the, the souls of the tzaddikim there. He has, uh, I don't know, cars. He has diamonds. He could have said anything. Everything is a shem. He says, no, no. The only thing he has in his treasure chest is fear of the Almighty being expressed by people. That's what he has. That's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu has. Arav Toledano, Allah Shalom, 
was a ish kadosh. The stipler used to send his children of Kanievsky when he was a kid. He tell him, "Go look at the Rav Taladon. Just go look at him." Why just go look at him? Maybe go learn. No, no, no. Go look at him. Why? That's Yirat Shemaim. That's what Yirat Shemaim looks like. So one time, Rav Taladano heard that there was a person that was not keeping Shabbat. Not keeping Shabbat. So what did he do? What does a person that hears another person has to keep Shabbat do? He went to him. Guy was surprised. What do I owe the honor to that I get to be one of the biggest rabbis in the world? To come to my house. And after all that, starts talking to him and saying, listen, I want to talk to you about Shabbat. And he starts talking to him and talking to him and talking to him and talking to him. He says, so what do you think? You're going to start keeping Shabbat? He says, no. So he continues talking to him and talking to him and talking to him and talking to him. He says, so what do you think? You're going to keep Shabbat? He says, no. So after all that, continues talking to him and talking to him. He tells him reward, punishment, death penalty, this, that, the other thing. So you ready to keep Shabbat? And the guy still says no. And then Arav Toledano starts crying hysterical and no one can stop him. And the guy starts getting nervous. He says, well, Arav, okay, fine. Well, what, what happened? Why are you crying so much? Why are you crying so much? He says, I'm not crying over you, Arav Toledano says. I'm crying over myself. Why are you crying over yourself, Arav? He says, because our Chachamim have taught us Anyone that has Yirat Shamaim, his words will be heard. What I learned today is that I have no Yirat Shamaim because I'm trying to talk to you to get you to keep Shabbat and you won't listen to me. So obviously it shows that there's no Yirat Shamaim. I'm living a lie. And he starts hysterical crying. And the guy says, Oh my gosh, Kodarab, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm going to keep Shabbat. That's the case. I'm going to keep Shabbat. It's not about that. It's because I have desires. It's because of this, because of that. But no, no, I'm sorry, Rabbi. Start keeping Shabbat. And show that obviously Rav Tolodan does have Yirat Shemaim. His words were heard. But the key Rabotai is that we see the Yirat Shemaim, fear of the Almighty, is a big deal. Is a big deal. How much of a big deal is it? Is it all or nothing? Gemara, Masechet, Shabbat, page 31b. Starts actually with 31a. The Gemara says, Rabbi Barahuna says, any person who has acquired himself Torah knowledge, but has not acquired himself Yirat Shamayim, fear of the heaven, it's comparable to a treasurer to whom the keys to the inner chambers have been handed, Whereas the keys to the outer chamber were not handed to him. How can such a treasurer possibly gain entrance to the inner chamber? Someone that learns Torah, needless to say, someone that teaches Torah, but does not have fear of heaven. The Gemara says this is a complete waste of time. This is a complete waste of life to listen to him, to, to, to be next to him or her or whoever it is. It's a sad scenario to even be him. Why? Because the Torah, that's the treasure. But you're never going to get actual access to the real Torah, to real knowledge, to real connection and feeling of what the Torah is. Because you need the keys. You need the keys to that treasure. The key is Yirat Shemayim. Without your Shemayim, you can study until your eyes fall out of your eyes. You're never going to learn Torah in a real way. You're never going to get the feeling of real Torah. Never. That's what the Chachamim is saying. Rabbi Anai continues and he says, Chaval, Chaval, woe unto the person who does not own a courtyard, but he nevertheless makes for himself a gate for the courtyard. He says, what a fool. The person has a gate. He has a gate, but no, the, the gate is to nothing. The gate is to nothing. He got himself the Torah, but he didn't want to get himself Yirat Shemaim. What's the point of the gate? What's the point of the gate? The Admo Mikotsk was an Ishemet, lived about 200 plus years ago. And he was one of these people that 
within a matter of seconds he told you exactly what he thought of you and whether he has any connection to you or not because you, if you didn't you are you could not be part of his bet knesset of his keila or anything but of course every ishamet will have enemies and one of these enemies one time in, infiltrated into his into his chasidut and uh one time the admo gave a uh, little bit of wine a little bit of wine to each one of the chasidim before prayer and each drank then they prayed which is not a way that is typical and even a uh, against the shulchan aruch not supposed to drink while you're uh, drunk so from the outside perspective it looks like there was a problem here after the prayer was over that mo who never talked to this person before out of all the chassidim that are there points to the traitor points to the uh, to the infiltrator to the guy that's a faker points at him says Achutza, out you're not one of us so the guy says I know I'm not but how do you know he says my Hasidim do not get affected by wine what do you mean everybody drank no 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 you're not understanding my Hasidim they get the wine they drink the wine but the effect of the wine disappears the second we start praying because of their fear of heaven once a person has fear of heaven there is nothing can affect them i saw you you were tipsy during the prayer meaning you have no you you're not part of us go out out gemara Masechet Shabbat, page 63b. Says, start to 63a. Rabbi Shimon Belaki says, whoever raises a bad dog in his house prevents kindness from coming into his house. As it's stated, whoever keeps a bad dog withholds kindness from his fellow this is a uh job chapter 6 verse 14. for in a greek language hachamim say they call a dog lamas lamas and rab nachman bar yitzchak said he also casts off himself fear of heaven so let's explain this Gemara. to have a bad dog you're putting people in danger first and foremost putting people in danger you're not allowed you could also get people not to want to come to your house which means you're losing out on the mitzvah of having guests also you can cause a pregnant woman to get scared by your dog and and she could have a uh, miscarriage but the part that's a uh, confusing at first sight is Rab Nachman says that if you have a bad dog you're uh, causing lack of Yirat Shammai lack of Yirat Shammai why what does that have to do with Yirat Shammai what does that have to do with fear of heaven well if I'm explains that sometimes a person can be sitting in his house learning doing whatever and all of a sudden the door rings he's surprised oh no what happened maybe it's tragedy maybe it's this maybe it's that he opens the door and he sees his next door neighbor asking for sugar oh no you scared me no no I need sugar okay a little while later a few days later door rings again oh what happened is it a tragedy someone's calling huh yeah he finds out oh no no I just wanted to cheat how you doing so generally speaking he's constantly forced to think about Hashem help me I'm in a situation when he has when he has a bad dog a scary dog a vicious dog no one's going to come visit him no one's going to knock on his door no one's even wanted to call him no one nothing which means that he starts putting his bitachon that he has the protection of the dog he has the protection of the dog so 
in essence, the dog is causing him to have less yirat shamayim. Less yirat shamayim. The Gemara in Masechet Nida, page 14a, says that three types of people that are travelers. There's people that are uh, travel by ship, people that travel by camel, and people that travel by donkey. The people that travel by camel, the all the shine, the Gemara says. The people that travel by ship, tzaddikim. And the people that travel on a donkey, half a tzaddikim, half a reshaim. How come? It's people that travel on a camel, they tra- they have nothing on the camel, so their body is against the body of the uh, camel, which leads them to waste seed. Therefore, even though they don't necessarily intend to waste seed, because it shows they have no yirat shamayim, because they know they're going to waste seed, because the body heat to the body heat is going to eventually lead them to waste seed. Dal reshaim. They show they have no Yirat Shamayim. The people that are in, traveling by ship, they're tzaddikim. Why? They go into a dangerous trip and they're constantly praying to Hashem to save them. What about the donkey? Donkey, half tzaddikim, half reshaim. If they have Yirat Shamayim, when they sit on a donkey, they sit on the donkey either with something that is connect, that is between them and a donkey or they sit like a woman where the legs are on one side because that way they know they won't waste seed those are the tzaddikim but if they sit on it just like the camel uh, riders or they uh, sit on it in a uh, certain position that leads them to constantly get uh, uh, the friction why because they're gonna waste seed so Gma is constantly talking about these types of people having or not having Rachamai. next Gemara Masechet Yoma, page 72b. Says, Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmani, says in the name of Rabbi Yonatan, what's the meaning of what's written in the uh, verse in uh, Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 16? Lama ze mechir biyad ksi liknot chokma velevayim? Why is there money in the hand of a fool to purchase wisdom, though he lacks a good heart? What's the meaning of this? The meaning is, the Gemara says, Woe unto the enemies of Torah scholars who occupy themselves with the study of Torah, yet they lack fear of heaven. Meaning he's not saying woe unto the people who don't study Torah. It's war to the people who are enemies of the Torah scholars. Meaning that the enemy of a Torah scholar could be himself someone that considers himself a scholar, considers himself a rabbi, considers himself knowledgeable, but he's still considered an enemy of the Torah. What is the difference between him being a someone that learns and considered an enemy of the Torah versus someone that learns and is considered a scholar at Talmud Chacham? says the difference is that the enemy of the Torah, he lacks fear of heaven. He lacks fear of heaven. And Rabbi Anai, Rabbi Anai says, Woe unto the one who does not own a courtyard but makes a gate for his courtyard, just like the previous Gemara says. He says, Why woe unto him? Why woe unto him? Because it elaborates on it. Rabbi says, I beg you, do not acquire Gehenom twice. Rabbi says it's it's woe unto him because this person has no yirat shamayim. These people that have no yirat shamayim, they get genom twice. They get genom twice in this world and the next world. Meaning their life is hell in this world and the eternal world. And the eternal world. Masechet Tubot, page 96a. Rabbi Chia Bar Abba says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Anyone who prevents his disciples from attending to him, is regarded as if he withholds from him kindness. As it's stated by one who withholds kindness from his fellow. And Rav Nachman Bar says, he also casts off from his disciple the fear of heaven. As it's stated uh, in the conclusion of the same verse, that he abandons the fear of God. What is this? It says, there is learning from the rabbi and it is shimush of the rabbi what shimush of the rabbi attending to the rabbi helping the rabbi helping giving the rabbi a ride 
helping the rabbi with certain projects, whatever it is, helping the rabbi. That's called shimush. And it says, we know that every time in the Torah it adds the word et, eh, which means end, it adds a mitzvah. So, kabet et avicha, be'et imecha, that honor your father and your mother, means that you also have to honor your older brother. When it says, kabet et Hashem, honor Hashem, well, there's nothing, what's more than Hashem? It says, honor your rabbi like you honor Hashem. So, here the Gemara is saying that part of honoring the rabbi is not just learning from him, but also attending to him. Attending. Ki mora rabo, ki mora so it says you have to attend him because you have fear of him, like you have fear of heaven. So you have to attend to this rabbi. But what if the rabbi doesn't want you? What if the rabbi doesn't want you to give him a ride? What if the rabbi doesn't want you to help him with the project? He doesn't feel comfortable. He doesn't want you to do any of these things. He says, no, no. That rabbi is not allowed to not want to. What do you mean he's not allowed to want to? He wants to be alone. Leave me alone. So he's not allowed to not be alone. Why? If he does not allow, he's telling me to attend to him, to, to do shimush. Then he is withholding kindness from him. He's withholding kindness from him because that way he's going to learn what Yirat Shemaim looks like. And then, Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak says, yes, he actually withholds Yirat Shemaim from him. Why you withhold Yirat Shemaim from him? Because how is he going to learn Yirat Shemaim? He has to learn Yirat Shemaim, not just from the books. He has to see Yirat Shemaim. Who are your rabbis? Did you spend time with them? Did you learn with them? Do you talk to them? Do you, do you, do, what do you do? Oh, you have a rabbi that you met 20 years ago and that's it, that's, that's it, everything you do now is on your own. Habibi, you have a problem. You have a problem. You have a very serious problem. Why? Because if you don't have a rabbi, you have nobody to rub your shoulders with and see whether you're right or wrong. And the rabbi is, well, if the rabbi is too busy, when he's not busy, when he's not busy, you have to do whatever you can to help your rabbi. Why? That's how you're going to learn Yirat Shemaim, because you're going to see how your rabbi behaves. If your rabbi behaves like a dog, then obviously pick a different rabbi. But if your rabbi acts like a Talmit Chacham, like a Tzadik, then of course you have to do whatever you can to learn what he does. Why? And do the same thing. That's how you learn and you see Yirat Shemaim. Gemara Masechet Nida, page 16b. As you can see, there's countless sources. And believe me, this is not even 1% of 1% of all the sources. There's literally thousands and thousands of sources thousands thousands of sources to discuss Yirat Shemaim well we're going to talk about one or two more and we're finished it's an important subject enough to extend this you even because I know don't worry I'll answer all your questions after the Shem the Gemara Masechet Nida says that when a seed leaves the male member there's an angel called Laila. And Laila takes the seed, comes to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and says to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, what will be with this seed? Male, female, rich, poor, ugly, pretty, children, no children, etc., etc. And the Gemara says, everything is decided by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. As HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells Laila, Everything that will be in the seed. Except, will this person have Yirat Shemaim? Will he have Yirat Shemaim? That is going to be his only free choice. Expensive, but free. Expensive, but free. Because Yirat Shemaim is the only thing that HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not decide. Does not decide. Everything else he decides. Everything else he decides. The Gemara in Masechet Yevamot, page 62b. Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, Kol ha-yodea ve-ishto she'i yirat shamayim ve'eno pokda nekra chote she'neemar ve'adata ki shalom o'alech Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, any man who knows that his wife is a God-fearing woman but does not visit her conjugally is called a sinner. For it says you will know that your tent is whole and you will visit conjugally your own and you will not sin. Meaning, your Yirat Shamayim is expressed in every action that you do 
which includes the frequency that you are with your wife and even more so whether you're with your wife or not why if a person the Gemara says knows that his wife has and knows that she's not going to try to drag him to the movies and knows that she's not going to try to waste his time and make him talk about her girlfriends and knows that she's not going to try to take him to the mall but she knows that he knows that she's a tzaddikah he has to make sure to make the time to be with her which means if he has to stop learning to her, cancel a lecture cancel all types of things in order to be with his wife he must do it yeah but she's Yirat Shemai wouldn't she understand that I have a really important shiur I have a really important chabura I have a really important no she has Yirat Shemai but she's also human which means that your Yirat Shemai needs to be expressed in such a way that you know that you have to follow the Allah and the Allah is that you have to be with your wife specific times that is one of the things that a person has in a, that signs in a ketubah. In a ketubah, he signs on this. When a person is not having Yirat Shammai, first and foremost, he doesn't feel like he needs to wait at all. Second of all, he doesn't care whether his wife wants to be or doesn't want to be. Third of all, usually you'll have a wife that will uh, occupy a lot of extra time and waste his time and waste her time and waste life and so on and in so many words even the action itself shows the expression of lack of Yirat Shemaim which means the Chachamim are telling you that not only is Yirat Shemaim important but it's literally the foundation of Judaism where you have to apply it in every single action including when the lights are off and the door is closed and you are alone with your spouse that's how deep Yirat Shemaim goes into now the Midrash Tanchuma in Parashat Lech Lecha in Siman 12 on a verse 5 in the book of Genesis says look at the book of Genesis Parashat Lech Lecha says Avraham Avinu went as Hashem had spoken to him and Lot went with him. Avram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Avram took his wife Sarai and Lot, his, brother, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had acquired and the souls that they made in Haran. And they left to go to the land of Canaan. So the souls they made so Rashi says over there what's the souls they made says all of the people that they converted in Haran so the Midrash Tanchuma says what do you mean they converted if you're talking about Torah Torah was not given for many many more years hundreds of years later so converted to what there wasn't Judaism yet if you're saying it was in regards to the Brit Milah, Avraham at 75 years old did not even have a Brit Milah yet. So what converted? What converted? How did he convert people if there was no Judaism yet? Here the Midrash Tanchuma says, look no further than Onkilos Agel, the convert. He'll tell you what a conversion is. What's a conversion? what is a conversion I rabbi I want to convert to Judaism okay do you want to convert to Judaism because you like Jews you like want to convert to Judaism because you like food that's from Israel you want to convert to Judaism because you like the mitzvot why do you want to convert I want to convert because of XYZ okay so you have to make certain sacrifices you have to move to the Jewish community you have to keep mitzvot you have to keep Shabbat you have to do this you have to do that oh listen Rabbi that's too much can't you just convert me can't you just do it over the phone oh Rabbi listen maybe I could just go to some other mass conversion like the Christians go convert on the beach with a bunch of people and have some some uh, guy that's a half a Jew take pictures of me and the rest of the girls while we're going into the water as if it's appropriate and put it on the internet 
Can't we just convert that way? Habibi, you don't want to convert. You just want to go to the beach. You don't want to convert. You just want to be part of some club. That's not conversion. You know what conversion is? We're going to find out from Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu converted all of these neshamot, the, the, the Torah says. Torah says it. Torah says he created all of these souls. What created all these souls? What souls did he create? He made all these souls? Rashi says he converted them. What converted? There's no, there's no Brit Mila yet. There's no Brit Milah. There's no Torah yet that's uh, given to all of Am Yisrael. There's no Judaism yet. There's no Moshe Rabbeinu yet. What converted? He converted the guys. Sarah converted the girls. What converted the Midrash says? Converted, we learned from the convert. Onkelos. Onkelos says, Sheibidu leoraita that Avraham Avinu enforced on them the covenant of Hashem by teaching them about Gehenna, by teaching them about fear of heaven. That's conversion. You want to convert to Judaism? You have to be afraid of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If you're not afraid of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you're still a Goy. That's the reality. Why? That's the requirement. More than anything else. You don't have Yirat Shamayim. You don't have Torah. You don't have Judaism. You don't have nothing. And that Rabotai is something that you can only toil over in order to acquire it. You're not going to find it on some beach. You're not going to find it from some heretic. And you're not going to find it just by watching a few videos and hoping for the best. You're going to find it if you toil and toil and toil to fulfill the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, whether you like it or you don't like it. And that's why Rabotai Karim. Yirat Shamaim, Iotzaro, that's his treasure. You want to convert to be part of the chosen people? Start acting like the chosen people. Not the chosen people that have a few among them that are wicked, but rather the chosen that are spoken about in the prophets, the spoken about in the five books of Moses, spoken about in all the Sifret Tzadikim. Those are the chosen, those are the best. The teachers, the, the righteous, that's who we learn from. We don't learn from wicked people. We learn from tzaddikim. Just like we won't learn anything from a doctor that killed a bunch of people. We learn from a doctor that saved people. This is why Rabotai, all of these rabbis, all of these tzaddikim, the Gdole Ado, Arab Yitzhak Yosef, the Arab Zamir, Arab Gidon ben Moshe, Arab Eliyahu ben Chaim, all of the Arab Baghdad, all of these giants, they say, listen, you're not doing anything special, Rabbi. All you're doing is you're teaching the Torah. Anyone that goes against it, let him go against it. We've had people go against the Torah for generations. You are teaching what the Torah says. We all agree with you. We all support you. And guess what? Tell you a secret, we've all been doing it for a long time, before you even knew about it. Just like we learned from Moshe Rabbeinu. That's the Torah Rabotai. You want to convert, you want to be a righteous Jew, you have to learn Yirat Shemayim. It doesn't come in some cookie. It's not something you're going to find. It's something you acquire. You work on it. And when you do, the words that will come from your heart will reach the hearts of others. If you don't have it, you're simply wasting your life, your time, and everybody else's. Bezat Hashem, this will give us at least a little bit of a sense of the significance of Yirat Shemaim. Significance of Yirat Shemaim. And whether we really want to be Jews like our leaders, we want to create a new religion, but just call it Judaism. Because we have a lot of fakes in the world. You'll have a lot of Nike shoes, but they're not all really Nike. They're just sometimes they're made in some you know country, and they put the same letters on it. Just like you'll see some uh, brand name uh, bag that in a store costs $3,000, but in the streets costs $15. They both say Louis Vuitton. They both say Gucci. But everybody knows one is real, one is fake. Why is one real, one fake? 
one has to go through every detail of the procedure in order to qualify to be real and that costs a lot more the fake one looks the same is named the same but everybody with a little bit of sechel knows it's a fake same thing with judaism Rabbi you have real judaism and you have people that call themselves jews the ones that are teaching what our Gemara says, what our Allah says, what our every what our sages say. That's authentic Judaism. Anyone that does that will have the support of the biggest and most righteous people on the planet. And anyone who doesn't will have the support of all of his uh, uh, crocodiles and coyote students and a few of his friends, which will abandon him at some point because eventually just like all heretics they eventually turn on each other but just give that time but Hashem, this will give us the chizuk that we all need in order to serve Hashem the way Akadosh Baruch Hu wants us to serve him from Yirat Shamayim because that is the treasure